uh, I will continue uh, the MRA pulse amplitude modulated signal uh, which we left in our previous uh, video. Uh, well, uh, actually the in the previous video uh, we derived uh, some uh, expression uh, such as uh, for the uh, signal SM of T we said that our band uh, our uh, pulse amplitude modulated signal can can be represented as AM times P of T and keep in mind this was this discussion uh, uh, the which we uh, which we carried out in our previous uh, video was uh, for baseband uh, signal baseband signal so this representation is for the uh, baseband signal and we saw that our p of t is actually a baseband signal uh, now uh, we also derived uh, a couple of expressions uh, for the energy of this uh, signal and we uh, said that the energy of the signal uh, is actually e m square uh, a sub m square times uh, EP <coughs> E sub P where E sub P is the energy of this pulse right E sub P is the energy of the pulse and uh, we derive the uh, average uh, the expression for the average energy average symbol energy and we said that the average symbol energy actually equals to M square minus 1 times uh, EP over uh, over three this is what we derived in our previous class uh, let me uh, write it EP this is actually EP right or let me write it a bit, a bit that way. so this is uh, uh, the average energy which we uh, uh, derived in our previous uh, video well that discussion was based on the uh, baseband signal uh, baseband uh, MRA pulse amplitude modulated signal uh, uh, however today we will see the uh, carrier modulated band pass signals because usually the pulse amplitude uh, modulated signals are carrier modulated band pass signals and uh, we will see the carrier modulated band pass signals and the, its equivalent low pass uh, form the low pass equivalent form is usually uh, uh, of, a, of a carrier band pass modulated signal is usually written and it, usually it is in the form of uh, a m g of t this is uh, usually uh, where a m and g of t are real signals right these are a, a m is real uh, some real number and g of t is a real signal and this is known as a uh, it is uh, the low pass equivalent uh, form uh, of a basement signal which we will see shortly but before going to the uh, topic actually let me uh, recall your previous knowledge uh, of the signal space if you uh, go back to uh, the concept of signal space your concept of signal space we learned that uh, we can represent our signals in a signal space uh, where we have uh, psi 1 of t and psi 2 of t as the uh, basis functions and any point any point uh, any point in this uh, uh, Euclidean space it represent uh, actually a signal point right and a position vector uh, represents the uh, yeah, this represent the signal vector so uh, any point suppose this is a uh, point s so this point s is actually uh, it can be written as a linear combination of psi 1 and psi 2 right it can be written as a linear combination of uh, psi 1 of t and uh, b times psi 2 of t b times psi 2 of t so we can uh, write this as a linear combination of uh, psi 1 of t and uh, let me let me 
write it uh, in in a uh, better we write it a plus b times psi 2 of t so we can write it as a linear combination and we say that uh, a comma b uh, is a vector form uh, these are the coordinates of this uh, signal we already have this knowledge from our previous uh, uh, videos so this is what we know uh, from our previous knowledge similarly uh, just recall this one if you uh, if uh, you forget it just go through those uh, slide those videos uh, which explain the signal space concept uh, available on uh, the YouTube uh, so I have already uploaded these videos right uh, can go back to learn this signal space concept now uh, we will see today the how uh, pulse amplitude modulated signal can be represented in the uh, in, in the Euclidean space similarly uh, if you recall uh, one more mathematical identity that E of J theta is actually written as cos of theta plus J sine of theta this is Euler identity which is used uh, um, uh, most frequently uh, while we when we explain the digital modulation schemes and if I write the real part of e raised to the power j theta then uh, clearly it is just this part cos of theta so this is only cos of theta and the imaginary and the imaginary of e j theta is sine of theta right so uh, just uh, this for uh, just you need to recall these identities uh, well <coughs> this is the vector form we saw that our vector vector form of a signal where we just show the these uh, coordinates right these coordinates today we will see the coordinates for our carrier modulated uh, pulse amplitude PM signal now let me uh, recall one uh, another uh, uh, yeah, another property or uh, let me recall uh, you have a, a simplified communication system that whenever you want to transmit some uh, signal uh, s of t s of t from a transmitter uh, to the receiver essentially essentially uh, we need to, this is a, this, suppose this is a baseband signal so you need uh, to Multiply it with a carrier, right? With a carrier which is uh, uh, a sinusoid cos of uh, 2 pi f c t. So, uh, what happens when you multiply it with the carrier? So, when you multiply these two with a carrier, uh, what l l let me draw it uh, in frequency domain as well. If you see the frequency uh, domain, s of t uh, has a Fourier pair s of f right now uh, this s of f it's a basement signal and if you plot your s of f uh, it's actually uh, it, it looks like this it looks like uh, when we say it's a basement signal it means the spectrum is around zero right it's zero and this is the frequency axis frequency axis and this is your s of f so your s of f looks like this now if you observe the uh, spectrum of the cause wave uh, the spectrum of the cause wave are uh, the amplitude spectrum is you can see these are two impulses if you uh, see the spectrum of the cause wave so this is on frequency axis now so we have s of f we have uh, this spectrum for the uh, cosine wave this one when you multiply two signals in the time domain uh, what happens in the frequency domain actually in the frequency domain the corresponding uh, like in the multiplication in time domain is same as uh, the convolution in frequency domain so it means if you convolve this signal with this one you would get the uh, spectrum of this uh, 
uh, bandpass signal. So if you convolve this, now convolution uh, is for S of F, S of F and with this one. So if you convolve this, uh, what actually you get when you uh, convolve this one? What would you get? Uh, let me let me write it here. Let me write this convolution. Let me draw this. The result of convolution. When you convolve these two signals, uh, S of F, right, and this one, and you convolve this. Suppose this is your uh, F. So these uh, these are at F C and minus F C because it's a cosine wave. This one. So it is at Fc and minus Fc, right? So if you convolve these two, uh, what actually you would get? Uh, we are going to get this signal. Uh, we are going to get the, the result would be this one. It is at Fc, it is at minus Fc. And this amplitude, if it is unity, you will see that this amplitude peak amplitude is half of that right similarly this is half so you would see the, the uh, now your signal the basement signal actually move to this man your basement signal actually move to this man right so your basement signal actually moves to this man this is your uh, to this uh, this is the bandwidth of your, uh, this is the bandwidth. So, uh, this is the bandwidth of your signal, uh, carrier modulated signal. Now, let's see the uh, pulse amplitude with this knowledge, having this knowledge, uh, let's see the pulse amplitude modulated signal. And if we go to the, uh, uh, let me let me uh, write it in a uh, free in a clear uh, window so let's see our uh, we said that pulse uh, the, our previous discussion was based on the baseband uh, pm signal now uh, the uh, carrier modulated the carrier modulated uh, uh, pm signal can be expressed uh, in this form uh, we can say that okay our carrier modulated uh, signal is uh, carrier modulated signal is uh, real of real of sm actually i'll just use a different notation sm of t uh, s sub m of t uh, instead of s sub m of t i'm using uh, M with a small l which uh, just say that the low pass equivalent right this is the low pass equivalent of a signal and uh, real of uh, e raised to the power j 2 pi f c t right so this is uh, this is our signal sm of t uh, which is the carrier modulated band pass pm signal uh, with the low pass equivalent being this one low pass equivalent and if you see this is actually a carrier this is actually carrier so it's a pure frequency because if you see its magnitude the magnitude of this e raised to the power j j theta its magnitude is unity so it's a pure, pure frequency right fc it's a pure frequency sinusoid so when we say real of this real of uh, this actually uh, by by writing it in this form we have the real part of this is the uh, same as this as i mentioned that the low pass equivalent is in the form of a m g of t where g of t is real signal right it's real signal so we can rewrite it uh, in this form e raised to the power j to pi f to pi f c t so this is uh, we can rewrite this equation uh, we can rewrite it in this form now uh, further if you uh, taking the real part only so we are just having because our signals are real so taking the real part we have uh, we can write it as cause of uh, 
add to pi f c t. So this is the uh, carrier modulated uh, pulse amplitude PM signal. Pulse amplitude modulated signal. The carrier modulated PM signal. Where this is the uh, this is the low pass equivalent of the uh, carrier modulated signal. Now. Uh, as uh, we saw earlier that we are always interested in the um, the energy of the signal so if we compute the energy of the signal uh, we can compute the energy uh, energy of this signal so uh, we denote it by em and if you compute it just by squaring and integrating it over a period right square and integrate over a period period of interest where our signal exists so this will be a m square g square t cos square omega c t dt right so this is the uh, we need to find out this integral for uh, computing the energy of this signal so uh, let's uh, solve it and uh, we try to find out this uh, integral so let me solve this integral we can uh, just write this a m square outside and we can say okay inside is g square t and this can be written 1 plus cos 2 omega c t c t plus cos 2 omega c t over 2 right and then we have d t we have to solve this integral right now if you uh, solve it further you can write it in the form of two uh, integrals one is the a m square over to uh, g square t is these limits are from 0 to t 0 to t and dt and another integral uh, which is uh, actually a m square uh, let me a m let me write it again uh, a m square over 2 uh, a m square over 2 and then we have uh, uh, this one 0 to capital T uh, g square t cos of uh, cos of uh, 2 omega c t right 2 omega c t so whatever it is just just write it down whatever it is so we can write this second integral uh, now uh, if we can write it in this form uh, let, let me uh, solve it further now uh, what do you get actually you you get this uh, now if you see here if you see uh, it's moving there let me uh, move it over here let me bring it to the center of our screen and then I'll write okay if you observe if you observe uh, this is the energy of the uh, signal eg right this is eg energy of the pulse this square square of the signal is actually the energy of the pulse now uh, if we integrate uh, assuming assuming that the energy uh, of the pulse uh, this is the energy of the pulse now from here if we integrate this one uh, gate pulse can be usually the gate pulse can be just for simplicity assume that our gate pulse is just like this g of t is a gate pulse time interval pulse right this suppose this is our g of t so assuming that it is uh, the gate pulse from 0 to capital t uh, so keeping in mind that this is our gate pulse with some positive a level whatever is the level uh, this the square its square its square would give you some 
some uh, positive value and if the rest would be it means this g square t can also be uh, we can also write it outside this integral so when we integrate zero to cos of 2 pi f c t the rest will be cos of 2 pi f c t to omega c t right here to omega c t so the rest integral of uh, the the integral of this function the integral of this function is actually zero due to this cos of 2 pi f c t over a period so you can uh, take it and you can just verify this that the integral of a signal the integral of and that is uh, actually uh, that integral would be uh, zero and uh, you would be left with uh, this term only a m square over 2 e g this is the energy of our signal this is the energy of our signal the low pass equivalent signal of a carrier modulated pm so this is the energy now uh, if you uh, well if you compare if you compare uh, your uh, carrier modulated signal with the one we uh, studied earlier if you compare your signal just uh, let me write it both and then we will uh, compare those signals right we just derived the energy and earlier uh, for a basement pm signal we said that sm of t is a m p of t right and for the uh, uh, band pass signal we said that our sm of t is actually uh, a m g of t and cos of cos of uh, omega Right? we said this is our band pass signal now if you compare it here uh, it can be observed that for a, uh, this p of t m is there right this is also m m is there m is there but this p of t here p of t is can we can uh, by comparison we can see this that our p of t is actually g of t cos of omega c t now this is the uh, p of t uh, similarly in above expression when uh, dealing with the basement signal we uh, computed energy and we said that it is actually equal to a m square times e p right uh, a m square times e p uh, but now uh, the same energy when we computed this energy for the uh, carrier modulated signal we said that the energy em is actually uh, equal to am square m square uh, over 2 times eg so if you see ep the energy of this band uh, pulse the energy of the pulse is equal to eg over 2 now by the, uh, the comparison uh, by, you can uh, write uh, yourself that okay uh, we can uh, based on this uh, analysis we can write that uh, the basement signal energy is actually uh, equal to this gate pulse over to this this is by comparison now uh, if you substitute this uh, value uh, you can compute the average energy average energy for the carrier modulated signal which we can represent by eta sub uh, average and that is actually equal to uh, that can be written as equal to m square minus e over uh, actually if you see go back to your uh, ep instead of ep uh, let me write the previous expression you had this expression uh, for uh, basement signal but now uh, we, we instead of ep we have to replace this eg over 2 so if i replace it uh, by eg over 2 uh, i would like to uh, write it in terms of eg so this is eg over 6 right this is eg over 
we can write the average symbol energy is equal to this one this expression and now uh, for the carrier modulated thing this is the average symbol energy and you can compute uh, the you can write expression for the average uh, bit energy bit average the energy per bit uh, which is equal to the above expression above expression over k because each symbol carries k bits so this expression which is m square minus 1 eg over k or uh, instead of k we can also write log log m to the base 2 right so uh, i hope you, uh, you remember this expression that m is equal to this we power k in case k is equal to uh, k is equal to log of m to the base to the base 2 so uh, we can write the bit energy the average energy per bit uh, for carrier modulated pm signal in this form now another uh, uh, for this modulation uh, for pulse amplitude modulation we also have to uh, we also have to represent it in the form of uh, the in the form of the basis function orthonormal basis function so you are familiar with the orthonormal basis function from our previous uh, videos right uh, from the signal space concept so uh, we have to write it we should be able to write it in the form of orthonormal basis functions and uh, as we saw that uh, uh, it is a one dim we will see actually we will see that it is a one dimensional signal uh, let let, uh, let me use the pulse p of t to find out the orthonormal basis function now uh, keep this in mind that uh, for orthonormal basis function uh, we used earlier we uh, used the notation psi 1 of t and psi 2 of t right when we were discussing the signal space concept we use these uh, notation now uh, here if you uh, want to find the uh, orthonormal basis function of this signal now keep in mind we uh, we we just say that okay our signal sm of t uh, can be expressed as pm signal can be expressed as this one right a baseband signal can be expressed as p of t or uh, you can also uh, represent it in the form of g of t the form of that gate pulse g of t so uh, now to see that each symbol uh, it is very clear that each sm of t uh, is uh, only uh, diff they differ from another uh, pm symbol by this amplitude only only by this amplitude p of t is same for all uh, when you want to uh, when you want to find out the uh, dimension now we just need this uh, one psi 1 and we can find out psi 1 from uh, this pulse if you have a pulse right if you have a pulse uh, we don't know what's the energy of this pulse it's not unity of course it's not unity assuming that the energy of the pulse is not unity while in orthonormal basis function we uh, should have uh, uh, the energy of the basis function should be unity uh, right uh, this is the property of orthonormal basis functions that its energy should be its energy should be unity and if they are uh, uh, two or three or more in numbers they should be orthogonal to uh, one another so uh, to make the energy of this pulse unity we can find psi one of t uh, or you can also represent it by uh, phi 1 of t right phi 1 of t and just uh, what you can do you can uh, take the same pulse and divide it by its pulse energy so the square root of its pulse energy if you do this 
if you divide the pulse with the square root of its energy uh, the, you get this phi 1 or psi 1 and uh, uh, the energy of this function psi 1 which is actually derived from p of t the energy of this signal would be unity which is uh, essential requirement for orthonormal basis function right orthonormal basis function so we derive uh, uh, we derive this one uh, this uh, uh, psi 1 of t or phi 1 of t your book has actually uh, uh, represented this one as uh, phi 1 of t uh, so we can derive it by uh, dividing the square root of the energy of this pulse uh, and when we do that now uh, we can write we can write our signals uh, as a linear combination or as a scaled version of phi of t right so we can write our signals as a scaled version of uh, phi 1 of t so if you want to write your uh, uh, if you want to write sm of t sm of t as a scaled version of phi 1 of t uh, so keep in mind uh, you you need to uh, you you should write it this way right you should write it uh, square root of its energy you have to multiply this thing right so this is the represent or just representation of the uh, uh, representation of sm of t in in this basis in uh, using the orthonormal basis function phi 1 right so now you can compare it with your previous expression it is the same uh, as you have seen earlier it is uh, the same as a m times p of t it is the same as this one right because uh, you, you can just observe this expression you can just observe this expression right just observe this one so uh, it's the same as the above expression so we can write sm of t uh, uh, using the orthonormal basis function phi 1 of t and if you have uh, this orthonormal basis function uh, the same now you can re uh, replace this uh, square root of ep you can replace this square root of ep by uh, eg over 2 right eg e, you can replace it by eg over 2 or uh, phi 1 of t right you can replace it by this one so you can also represent it in the form of eg you can also represent it in the form of uh, eg so this is uh, another representation now the <coughs> now the vector form the one dimensional vector representation is uh, now clear we have the one dimensional uh, vector representation of our signal now with this uh, basis function so if you observe uh, uh, we can say that okay our signal vectors sm our signal vector uh, sm can be written as a sub m under root uh, eta p and uh, what is am actually am as we know from our previous knowledge is plus minus one plus minus three and and so on right up to m minus one up to m minus one right up to plus minus m minus one plus minus m minus one similarly you can also uh, you can also write it uh, using the notation uh, you can also write it as a m uh, square root of a m square root of uh, e sub g over 2 and uh, again you can say that a m is plus minus 1 now if you <coughs> uh, if you want to draw uh, the signal constellation right uh, or the signals in Euclidean space using this vector notation uh, you can write for uh, m equal to for uh, m equal to 2 for 
m uh, for m equal to 2 uh, it would be just two signals here and here you will have two points right uh, representing a 0 and a 1 just two unique points representing a 0 and a 1 similarly uh, for m equal to uh, 4 for m equal to 4 if you have uh, four signals you can have uh, two points here and two points here representing uh, uh, the binary sequence 0 0 0 1 for example 1 1 and uh, 1 0 1 0 similarly uh, similarly we can also uh, write uh, we can also draw these uh, for m equal to 8 so you have 8 signal points 4 on this side 1 2 3 4 1 2 1 2 3 4 so you have 4 signal points and each would represent 0 0 0 and so on uh, you can say ok uh, 0 0 1 and then uh, I would write here the next bit 0 1 1 and 0 1 0 then we have uh, 1 1 0 and 1 1 1 and 1 0 1 and then 1 double 0 now <coughs> if you uh, carefully observe these uh, bit assignment to the symbols these are the symbols right Sing signal points or unique symbols and the bit assignment each adjacent symbol each, ad, each adjacent symbols differ by just one bit uh, if you see for example if you see these two these are the adjacent symbols right these are the adjacent symbols and they differ by uh, only one bit the first the uh, if you observe closely this this is the only bit uh, by which these two differ because the second and the third bit are same Similarly, you can observe in any of these uh, combinations, any of the adjacent points. You just take any adjacent points and you see that those will differ by uh, just one bit position. For example, the, in this one, you have these two bits are similar. So, only the third bit is different in this one. So, this, uh, this kind of bit mapping or bit assignment to the uh, these M signals is known as the gray coding this is the gray coding uh, assignment uh, for the uh, symbols the bit uh, assignment to the or bit mapping uh, to the symbols the adjacent uh, uh, signals or the adjacent symbols differ by one binary digit only now the uh, carrier model the band pass digital pm uh, signal is also known as the amplitude shift key so uh, keep this in mind it is also known as ASK amplitude uh, let me move it a bit and I will have some space to write so this uh, this is also known as uh, amplitude shift key in the uh, amplitude of the carrier the amplitude of the carrier uh, varies according to the message bits so if you have uh, um, the, the different message bits will have a different uh, amplitude of uh, will uh, have different amplitude of the carrier so the euclidean distance now here we uh, saw that the distance between the two uh, points the euclidean distance